Hey everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel, and today we're taking a look at another DC Collectibles animated figure. Big surprise there. Uh, figure number 13? 13 is it? Yeah, 13. Batman from Batman the Animated Series. Let's check him out. Alright, as always, we're taking a look at a package version first. Batman, number 13 in the line. He's from the animated series, so he's got red highlighting down below and behind on the back with the Batman animated logo. We've got Batman animated series number 13 there. Batman packaged inside with some stuff behind him. Number 13, Batman, sculpted by Irene Matar, who did almost this entire line, it feels like. Flip-flop, red Batman on black background. Some gibberish down below. All right, that takes care of that. Let's get him out. Okay, we got Batman out of the box. We'll start things off with a look at the new poster insert. Half Batman animated, half new Batman adventures. We've got some new figures on this. We finished off the first one. So we're starting off with number 13 here, Batman, from On Leather Wings, which, if you remember right, from the Man Bat review, he's also from On Leather Wings. Kind of strange that they would put two from the same episode when you can easily put Batman... From any episode. You could choose any episode and say he's from that episode and have basically the same accessories. Um, so we've also got... So in the first wave here, we've got three from Batman the Animated Series, one from New Batman Adventures, a deluxe New Batman Adventures, then three from New Batman Adventures, and one from Batman the Animated Series. And then, of course, the Batmobile. And since this is on this poster insert and the Batmobile is not numbered, I can kind of pick wherever I want to within this range to do the Batmobile. But it'll probably be sooner rather than later because I want to do the Batmobile. Uh, the stand. So here we have our turnarounds. And then here is the sheet from the style guide, which shows us those same turnarounds. As you can see, they did the whole cape invisible thing. They didn't highlight the blacks on this stand like they did on that, which is kind of strange. But... There's that. You know how I feel about the stand. In this case, it's got the one prong, and it's got the little piece that slides on with just the clips and nothing extending because of the cape. I don't use these anyway, though. Regardless of which one they give you, I'm not going to use it. Uh, accessories, we've got the grapnel gun, and we've got a batarang, and the grapnel gun even has a little paint app on the end of it showing the grapple inside. Extra hands, we've got two open hands. Now, you can put the grapple in one of these, but it won't fit in as the correct way for Batman to hold it. That's why we've got this hand down below, which has the grapnel gun permanently sculpted in the hand, so it can do the whole fingers around the handle deal. It would be really tough to sculpt a hand for this one and have it work just right. I know they did that for the new Batman Adventures, but it's still a little slightly different style, and it may have been too difficult for it to do it. And then we've got a pair of hands that have a pinching kind of action going on, and these are good for the Batarang. We'll take off one of these, and we'll show you how that works. You just put the tip of the battering in the end of the hand, and he holds it just like that. And then as I was saying about the grapple gun, it can't really fit in there the correct way. The most you can have him do is just kind of hold it with that hand. Okay, height. Batman stands right at about six and a quarter inches at the top of his head. The DC Collectibles animated lines are built on a six inch scale as opposed to the other DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures, which are ordinarily 7-inch scale. Uh, here he is next to Robin, so you can get a good idea of how he fits in as the dynamic duo. Okay, this design on Batman. Now, the first Batman animated figure released was based on the new Batman Adventures. Not my preferred version of Batman, this is my preferred version of Batman. So when this one came out, I was super excited. And it seems like they got everything right design-wise. We've got the interior of the cape being blue and the exterior being black. The shapes are all right, where it has more of that those rounded edges, as opposed to the Batman anime, the new Batman Adventures is more angular. So we've got more of a rounded look on the fist and on the face and on the chin. Everything just has I don't know more of a a rounded look, more of a cartoony look to it. Um, I don't know if it's cartoony is the right term, but it's it's just the, the it's hard to describe that Bruce Tim Batman animated series design. It really felt like it was more rounded. And there was more depth to it, as opposed to the new Batman Adventures, which got very angular. It had more harsh angles on everything. Uh, so this sculpt, I think, captures that well. Let's talk about some articulation, and then we're going to go over a couple things that 
would be improved on later figures that are sort of a problem on this one. So we've got hinged ankles. They can hinge back and forth. And they also do that pivot. We've got no articulation on the boot on this one. The boot is part of the leg sculpt. So there's nothing there. We have a single knee joint that does ratchet. The hips hinge out to there. Now here's where one of the problems comes in. You can get the hip to move back. But as far as moving forward, that's about as far as you're going to go without there being some kind of resistance. You could push it further. I definitely think you could. But this one right out of the box, if you can see at the top of that hip, there's sort of a shinier black showing, and then there's a flatter black. So the flatter bl black is the paint, and the shiny black is the plastic underneath. So as it pushes forward, it kind of moves away some of that paint. It sort of rubs it off. Thankfully, they did mold this in black plastic. If they'd molded it in the gray, that would have been super visible. It's not, it's picking up more on my camera because the lights, it's not that visible in person. So if I bent them back like that, I really wouldn't even notice where that black is shining through. Um, this is something that would be improved on later on with like the Bat Cycle, Bi the Bat Cycle Batman would get a new hip joint style. And that would carry forward to the Adventures Continue figure, which would also use that hip joint. But all of the other Batman releases, like the um, the Mask of the Phantasm 2-pack or the um, Batmobile Deluxe or the Bat Signal version, the Expressions pack, they all have still this same, same style of hip joints. So there's only two other Batmans that don't have this. Bats, the Bat Cycle and Adventures Continue. So then we've got rotation at the waist, and it's quite tight. Which I'll, I'll take a tighter joint over a super loose joint any day. Um, then we've got rotation at the shoulder. You have to hinge it out just a little bit to be able to do that. So it'll hinge into there, and it'll hinge out to there, and that's ratcheting. And then we've got rotation at the elbow, which also ratchets that way. Then we've got rotation where the hands plug in. They hinge in and out. And then we've got a ball-jointed head that can kick up to about there, down to there, and then rotate around. Another thing that's different between this figure and some of the other releases is the face sculpt. So you can see he's got a, a bottom lip sculpt that's sticking out. He's molded in flesh-toned plastic. Up close to the camera, you can definitely make out the lip. And the sculpt is quite nice. Further away, with it being molded in that flesh-toned plastic, you kind of lose that lip sculpt. It gets kind of lost. Like, it just looks like a flat face without a mouth really showing. They would improve this on the expressions packs, where it would add, like, a paint highlight on the lip. And on the Adventures Continue, where they would actually paint the face. It would not be just molded in this. The flesh tone would be painted on and then the lip would be highlighted. The Mask of the Phantasm version also has teeth showing, so you can see it better on that one too. So of them all, this is probably the weakest when it comes to that, that aspect, where you get sort of that, some of that sculpt lost in the face. It's still a great figure, though. This still really holds up. Would I recommend it out of all the Batmans? Probably not. Adventures Continue is my favorite, because it has all that cell shading, and I think the painted face looks a lot better and translate animation better than sculpting in flesh tone plastic. But if this is the Batman you've got, you've got a great Batman. You're not missing out on a great Batman. You've just got one of the great Batmans. Uh, it's just a matter of preference if you like painted stuff, or if you like the, the cell shading, if you prefer the new hips. It's all matters of preference. For me, this is maybe the weakest of the Batman animated releases. You'd get the ones with the cloth capes that came with the Bat Signal. You'd get the Expressions Pack where it had all the different choices. Mask of the Phantasm with the teeth showing. Adventures continue with the cell shading. This one is just kind of the vanilla one of the bunch. It's like, okay, you're getting a Batman animated. Here he is. And then these other ones would improve upon him later on. But again, still a cool figure. I think he's retailing right now boxed for like 60 or 70. And at that point, might as well put the money to the Adventures Continue version, in my opinion, because they're going for about the same amount. I think the Adventures Continue will continue to go up in value, though. And eventually, this one will probably be the cheapest Batman to buy is my guess. And at that point, though, if you just want a Batman animated figure, go ahead and grab him. Uh, super excited when this guy came out. Still super excited to have him. It's kind of a dream come true that this line happened, and he's the epitome of the line, the Batman animated series version of Batman. So you need this figure for sure if you're going to collect these. It's just a matter of which one you pick. Okay, that wraps up this one. Um, we're going to move on to number 14, which is the Riddler. And then either we're going to do some more figures or we're going to slip in the Batmobile. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. We're going to review all these guys. We're almost 15 in now, which is pretty impressive for me at least. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below if you've got this guy. See you guys. Bye.